Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh Bashmael, Shah Bashmael, Rakak, Radash, the double honor to the apostles of the great millstone, and as well as giving the salutation thereof towards the Akim, out that is forwarding this truth worldwide, out of sincerity, and Shalom to the Akim, Wa Akwafim, that support we say when we do, and most importantly, he. Once again, it's your brother Laban, and the title of this lesson is going to be called This Israelite Thing. It's not a movement, but rather an awakening, and Amalek is mad. And this is having to do with what's been going on for the past couple of weeks with, you know, Ye and Kyron Irvin blowing up this Israelite thing. And, you know, I've heard other celebrities mention this Israelite thing, especially among Jake, of course. And what that's done, it's, it's blown the Israelite thing up and it's opened a lot of eyes among our people and a lot of our people are now coming into that light and uh, they're being born again into who they really should have been all along and this is very upsetting to the small hatters because the small hatters need to claim that they're us so that people can accept everything that they do and what they say in other words they can dominate behind the curtains <clears throat> as they've usually been doing, you know. And um, when you have a bunch of people like us that are reclaiming that title of being Israel, that takes away their supremacy. And this is why um, sometime or another, they're going to have to come a little bit harder or real hard on the internet. As it is written in the book of Amos, the I believe it's the eighth chapter, where it makes mentioning of that there will be a famine of bread. But not only will there be just a famine of bread, but also a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Because it's the words of the Lord that's bringing our people back to who they are. And this is something that Esau does not want, because when we're down and out, they prosper. All right. And, uh, <laughs> and it's funny because Jacob and Esau cannot stand in the same room is either one is up or one is down so if we're up they're down and if we're down they're up that's how it works so Esau knows this Esau knows in order for them to to keep perpetuating their system Jake has to stay down because the minute Jake rises up Jake is going to overtake the enemy because we're stronger than the enemy as it is written that um, when Jacob was born Jacob was declared to be stronger than than the other brother, which was Esau. Okay, so again, I mean, like, let's just say Esau allowed us to stand in the same kind of rooms that they were in and gave us the same opportunities. You know what would happen? We would breeze right through Esau economically. We would take over their whole entire system. And that's what we did in ancient Rome. When 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 Jake got up in them higher positions in Rome, what do you think happened? We took over Rome and eventually... Um, we prospered more, and uh, those that originated Rome became our slaves. <laughs> and this is why the awakening is here. The awakening of, of uh, the 12 tribes of Israel. So let's begin by reading the book of Hosea 1 and uh, verse 10. Um, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor number. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. And there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living power. And that is the land of America and many other places that we were brought into and being scattered. So in these lands, we would be rather be called black, Negro, um, Afro-American, West Indian, and the names go on and on. But we've renounced all of these names when we came to the awakening. And now we call ourselves after our true nationality. Now, when we go to work, obviously, we have to bear, we have to bear these names, these titles. In our reality, we know who we really are at the end of the day. And we're those people of the book. Uh, verse, let me read this again. It says, um, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living power. 
And then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head. And they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jizra. Jizra just simply means the seed of God from the Hebrew at Yashra Allah. And um, the one head part, as I just read, reminds me of Ezekiel 37. As well, because in Ezekiel 37, it, it mentions the dry bones, which the dry bones are in, in reference and sim symbolizing the children of Israel, that they would be in a dead state and that a time would come that they would be awakened through the knowledge of Yahweh Shai. So this reads Ezekiel 37 and verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which is full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And what is that valley referencing Sym symbolically? All of the places that we were scattered abroad, but primarily America, because a, a, a valley is basically a, a low land. And America is a low land moralistically, and as well as all of these other um, cooperations, all these lands that are within the Western Hemisphere, to be exact, you know, are morally low. Okay? And this is why in the book of Revelation, the 11th chapter, America is known as what? Sodom and Egypt. Because America promotes the sodomization of men and women, and as well as promoting that to children too. All right, but I'll get there when I get there. Second verse, and caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, they were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, Lord, power thou knowest. <laughs> And again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And thus say of the Lord power unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. And what is that breath? That breath is the Holy Spirit, which is going to come by that knowledge that Yahweh Shah is going to present to us by presenting the men to us after his own heart. That's in the book of, uh, I believe that's in the book of Jeremiah somewhere. Where it reads that the Lord will send pastors after his own heart and they shall feed them with the real knowledge and understanding. Just briefly, roughly paraphrasing that. Uh, verse 7. So I prophesied and I, as I was commanded and as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them and the skin covered them above but there was no breath in them and uh the breath like i said represents the spirit of the lord which is the holy spirit and the flesh and this the uh, the sinews represents and as well as the skin represents keeping the law statutes and commandments and this would come after the breath ended into you and then you would project the knowledge that you know so you would keep the high holy days you would keep the laws and the commandments to the best of your ability you would wear the robes whenever you go out speaking. All of these things to convey as to who you are because the breath is now in you, which is the knowledge. Uh, verse 10, excuse me, verse 9. And then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind and prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord power, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. And that's referring to the children of Israel, which were under that curse of being scattered abroad. That's in the book of Deuteronomy 28 and verse 64, that among the nations we would be, we, we would be scattered, as it is mentioned. And, and among them, we would um, serve other gods. So brothers would read this and, and think, oh, yeah, this is referring to. If no one's listening to you, then just prophesy unto the wind, which to a degree you can say that, but more. More so, the four winds is really talking about the four corners because that's where Israelites are, are at throughout the four corners of the earth. And, and like I said, to a degree, you can say that because you may be in a corner where you could be teaching that and no one really hears what you're saying, but you, you, you could be going live and you got people that can come on your live and hear what you're saying in different countries too, just to include that. So... Again, we're going to read this. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind 
prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus said the Lord, power, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. And so I prophesied, and as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet in an exceeding great army. And um, the breath is the way, just to simply put it, as Jehoshaphat said, he was, he was the way, the truth, and the life. And that's what came into us, his knowledge. And that's why we're now living. And also, just to mention in the book of Proverbs somewhere, it mentions that them that remain from the way of the understanding of the Lord shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So now when we go into the book of um, Revelations, the 11th chapter in verse 8, which Ezekiel 37 is in, is in conjunction with this, um, to be exact, verse 8, And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And this would be America, because America promotes sodomy, and as well as in ancient Egypt, the Israelites were in hardcore slavery. And as well as America does take on knowledge that the ancient Egyptians had and use it for their benefit to a degree. And it also mentions where our Lord was crucified, meaning that the Lord's ways and his visage was basically X'd out. No longer to be the case anymore. Okay, uh, verse 9, And they of the people of the kindred and the tongues and the nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer the dead bodies to be put in graves. Why? Because there was going to be an awakening. And that the spirit of life were entered into them, jumping down to verse 11. Um, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Exactly, This is exactly in, in relation to uh, Ezekiel 37, where the bones came together, and they, and, uh, and which represents the house of Israel, and they stood together as an exceeding great army. All right, so going back there now, and I'll come back to Revelations 11 in a moment. Let me just read a couple of verses here. This is in verse 10 now. So as I prophesied, he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon, up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. And then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel, and behold, they say our bones are dried, and our hope is lost, and we are cut off. For our parts, and that's these other nations that are saying this, that there is no hope among us because they're seeing our degradable estate that we're in. And as well as as it reads in the book of Ezekiel 36, that we would become but nothing more than an infamy of the people, famous for the wrong thing. And thanks to that rap music that those JEWs have been spreading across the our world to destroy our image and as well as tarnish our PR too. Okay. So that's why these other nations look down upon us and we have become an infamy of the people to be exact because the Lord had the spirit upon them under the guise of Satan because Satan also works for the Lord too to do that job, which is a part of the curses. Uh, verse 12, And therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord power, Behold my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. So once we are awakened back to this knowledge and this understanding, we are going to be prepared to meet the Lord. All right. And I have to read the book of Matthews uh, 22. Because. The Israelites also represent that that that, um, that delicate, calmly woman and that delicate, calmly woman has to prepare herself so that she can marry her husband. So we as a people, beginning of the elect, we're getting ourselves prepared and ready to meet the Lord by putting on the garment of truth. And that's what the wedding garment is symbolizing right there and there. So this is our verse, uh, let's see, verse 11. Verse 10, we'll begin right there. Verse 9, go ye therefore into the highways and as many as ye shall find, bid them to the marriage. And so those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they were they found both bad and good 
and the wedding was furnished with guests. So the, the, the good and the bad represents the men that would come into this knowledge by the men that were, were presenting the knowledge in the first place. Because what is this knowledge really going to do? It's going to bring you back to connect or to be joined together as you are in marriage, husband and wife, right? So this knowledge is going to join you together to Yahweh Shai. That's what this is, the reconciliation. Okay? Because at once upon a time, we was cast away. Now we're being brought back to being his people. So that's what the term marriage really represents. It really represents to be joint back together or to be joint together. Excuse me. We're being joint back together. <laughs> I got to correct myself there. Uh, verse 12. I'll read verse 11 again. And when the king came into seeing the guests, he saw that there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, friend, how comest thou hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. And then said the king, and this was parabolic. This is, this is a literal then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. And there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called and few are chosen. So the wedding garment represents the doctrine that we will be under. So if you ain't got the right kind of doctrine, you're going to be rejected. That's what this is saying, because you have a lot of Israelite groups out there that are teaching, but are they really teaching the correct doctrine? Okay, so if Yahweh Shai, when he comes back, if he doesn't recognize your projection, if he doesn't recognize what you're saying, then you're, you're going to be rejected. Okay, that's why it reads, for many are called, but few are chosen. As, as it also reads in the book of Matthew uh, 7, that you're going to have men that are going to call on his name saying, Lord, Lord. Right? So let's bring that out. So we're going somewhere else just a little bit on this regard. So now let's go into... Um, Yeah, verse 21. Verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that do of the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you depart from me, ye that work iniquity. There you go. So just because you're teaching the way that you're teaching, the Lord knows what your intention is. The Lord knows who's got it and, and who, ain't, who ain't trying to get it. So when the time comes, guess what? There's going to be men that were teaching Israel and they're going to be rejected. And why are they going to be rejected? Because they didn't have the right doctrine. Going back to Matthew 22, they weren't teaching the right doctrine under his name. Okay, so that's the rejection part. That's the uh, that's what it means that, the, that he would be cast into out of darkness. That's the Lord saying, get from me from I never knew you. O ye that work iniquity. Because when you're teaching... The mark of the of the beast is something rather than what it what it should be, then you 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 again you're committing iniquity. Uh yeah, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna get the book of yeah, we're gonna go back to Revelations the eleventh chapter, because that's what I wanted to go back to. So just to fast forward a little bit to Revelations um eleven, because this is where I wanted to go back to originally. And um this also connects with Jeremiah 17 and 4. Concerning that long duration of time that we would be blinded from this knowledge. Uh, Revelations 11, 11, After three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. And what is that three and a half days? That's referring to when you had the transatlantic slave trade, the major one which took place in 1620. And then a man came out, out of the midst of nowhere in the streets to proclaim the knowledge, the true genuine knowledge of that, which was what was being taught 2000 years ago. And that was our Bivens, which he was teaching in 69 or 70. So that's that 350 years period that we were blinded from the truth. Okay. 
Now you had men between that time that knew they were Israelites that were teaching Israel, but they didn't have the right kind of knowledge that Abba was coming with. And so with that right kind of knowledge, he passed that knowledge on to men that he taught and other men. And then now this truth is, is now gaining the traction that it, that it needs to gain so that men can be awakened, the elect to be exact, and that we can go back to our place, which is uh, Israel in the way of our salvation. So this is the thing. The reason why we're, 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 we're coming back to who we are, because the Lord is coming back real soon and he has to get us prepared, as I've, if I, as I've said earlier before. All right. So when the Lord comes back, he's going to be recognizing and beholding his face in us because of this knowledge. If you understand what I'm saying, as I speak parabolically on that. Let me make it more simple. He's going to see his reflection in us due to this knowledge. OK, so now what I want to do is I want to read the book of John 5. Is the reason why we know that we're Israelites, despite the fact that we have not been taught this in any schools, whether we went to college or whether we went to high school, whatever schooling that we went to, no one taught us that we were the Israelites for the most part. Even our parents weren't taught this. So how did we come to, how, how, how in the hell did we come to this understanding? Because it was by divine order. It was the father through his son that allowed us to be quickened. And it's here, John 5. In verse 21, for as the father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the son quickeneth whom he will. So it was the son that quickened us. That's why we know what we what we are today. This is why we know um, the scriptures, because we're, we're being. Hmm. John 5 and verse 21, for as the father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the son quickeneth whom he will. So it was by the behest of Yahweh Shah that allowed us to be quickened. In this case, as it is written that they that are remaining from the way of the understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So we were dead from the neck up spiritually. And then the Messiah paved the way for us to be quickened in the spirit so that we can be delivered at the, at the eventually. So there you have it. The thing of it is, not only is Amalek seeing the awakening, but all of the rest, the rest of these other nations too that were hell bent and looking down on us because of our condition and th that natural hatred that they have for us. And so, but primarily dealing with the Amalekites to be exact, because they're the ones that hate us the most. So I have to read this. This is Job 8 and verse 22. They that hate thee shall be clothed with shame and the dwelling places of the wicked shall come to naught. Because it's really Esau that despises Jacob. This is the, the, the battle that's being fought between the two brothers besides the other nations. And all that stuff. So the thing of it is, these devils, when we trump over them, <laughs> it's going to be solidified that we're way better than them and that we're God's people and that they have to now bow the knee and kiss the feet. <laughs> okay. And they're going to be doing this, man. Like these devils, they're, they're high and mighty right now. They're calling the shots. You know, they're, they're, they're behind the curtains. They got as much as eyes can see and as, as much as the heart's desire among men. But guess what? Eventually, they're going to lose all of that and they're going to come before the knee. They're going to come before the, the, the foot of, of those who they've been afflicted pain upon and despised. And as it is written, they shall lick up the dust of thy foot. Okay? And it ain't just going to be these regular Edomites. It's going to be high-level Edomites that were once upon a time in these high positions of society today, they're going to come on high and they're going to be a base. As it is written, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And he that is exalted shall be a base. And he that is a base shall be exalted. Also reminds me of, um, what is it? First uh, Samuel 2 and verse 6. The Lord raise up and he bring him down. And he, and he raise up the, what is it? The beggar from the dunghill and make him to sit among princes. So that's what we're going to be. We're going to be coming from the bottom and we're going to be raised up to excellence. That's the last resort of the nation of Israel, the true nation of Israel, which is us, the so-called blacks, Latinos and Native American Indians. And this is why this awakening is here. This is why the Lord paved the way for us to 
learn this knowledge and this understanding so that we can get to that point. All right. So, um, you know, I think I've said what I had to say on this. I don't want to make this too of a lengthy video. Just going to make the point and be done with it. And, and if I want and if I have some more to say, I can also do another video on this too. do a part two to this. You know, I'll tell you what, let me read this last scripture. <laughs> this is uh, Luke 4 and verse 1. Just to fast forward a little bit as well on this regard. So this is um, Luke 4 and verse, we'll begin by reading verse uh, 3. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, command the stone that it be made bread. And Yahweh shall answer him, saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of the Most High. And I just wanted to read this just to further um, convey the point that this bread of truth has has allowed us to be awakened. And now we stand alive and well and we know our enemies and we know what their capabilities are. And we're no longer naive. Our eyes are wide open to everything now. We see everything for what it is. And most importantly, we're doing what we need to be doing. We have a true genuine purpose and that is to serve our creator. That's what makes us alive and well, is knowing that right there. And this is something that these other nations didn't want us to know, primarily to be exact Amalek, which would be which would which would be in these times the first of the nations, but then but then eventually, as Obadiah has it, he's gonna perish forever. Okay? So Esau is about to go down and want on the come up. And this truth proves that. That's why it's come up. In the first place. That's all I want to say. So with that, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and the Son. In this regard, Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah Bashmi Avakak Wadash, which is the Holy Spirit. And Shalom, I'm out.